Hey, what is up guys, it's Thunderstruck115, and today we are going to be taking a look at somebody who thinks that Halo Infinite sucks because it is too much like classic Halo, and that Halo needs to evolve the way the modern Doom games did, even though the main reason that Doom 2016 and Eternal were as popular as they were is because they returned to the form of the original games from the 90s, but the absolute intellectual who is making this claim goes by the name of Reforge Gaming. But let's waste no further time and see what YouTube has in store for us today. I believe that Doom can save Halo. Well, let me explain. What do I mean by save Halo? How could Doom be the game to bring Halo forward? I have a lot of thoughts on this, and I think that Halo as a franchise needs to not just sort of step forward. I believe they need to leap forward. Forward. And in doing so, I think a great example of how to do this is how Doom did it with Doom 2016 as well as Doom Eternal with one of the few long-standing franchises that I think has been able to pull this off. They were able to evolve to a higher plane of quality without leaving the soul of the game behind. Alright, I want everybody to just keep this in mind about what he said regarding how Doom evolved its mechanics while staying true to the core that it had back in the 90s, because it is going to be really damn important for when he talks about Halo later. Four years later, Doom Eternal, after Doom 2016, I think added even more to the process. Now, I don't want to get bogged down into a discussion about Halo Infinite and is it a good game or is it a bad game? I don't think that's helpful. I think it's evident that Halo has not sort of transcended into modern gaming very well. What I do want to do is walk through from sort of a big picture perspective what went wrong with Halo in recent years. That's Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen, because Discount Gotham Chess here is going to give us a comprehensive history of the Halo series and its rise and fall. And it will surely be an accurate retelling and not full of misinformation, right? <laughs> So first, what do I mean by they stayed too true? Well, to put it quite simply, Halo is a dated game. The first Halo came out in 2001, that was 22 years ago, and the speed and the movement and the feel of Halo, it still just feels too tied to the Halo games of old. <laughs> Are you really trying to claim that Halo Infinite's movement is the same as Halo Combat Evolved's movement? Because that's a big fucking yikes if so. Halo Combat Evolved had very simple and slow movement. Halo Infinite, however, has things like sliding, sprinting, the grapple hook, which, by the way, was one of the main selling points of the game during its marketing. You know, there's the thruster ability, you can use the repulsor to do super jumps, you know, there's gravity cannons. If you want to go back to Halo 5 as well, that also had the thrust, it had the Spartan charges, and the ground pound. Hell, something that's been a huge topic of debate ever since Halo Reach released is the whole fucking sprint debate that the Halo community just won't shut the fuck up about. Honestly, the fact that Sprint is such a contentious feature of the new games compared to the old one should tell you that Halo's movement has not been stagnant. If you compare Halo 1 PvP footage to Halo Infinite PvP footage, it's really, really hard to spot, like, significant differences. You've got to be completely blind if you think there are no significant differences in movement between CE and Infinite, as I just outlined previously. But, you know, if we want to talk about spotting no significant differences between gameplay footage, how about we talk about the fact I noticed no significant differences in your gameplay footage and the gameplay footage of United G. Yeah, this dude literally stole gameplay from this YouTuber right here, and he didn't even fucking credit him in the description. In fact, he conveniently placed his face cam right above where YouTube watermarks videos with a profile picture of the person who created the video, which suggests to me that he recorded it with like OBS or something instead of actually downloading it for better fidelity. And even though his profile picture is covered up, you can still see his username in the fucking kill feed. Now, I'm not saying there aren't differences, right? Obviously, player movement speed and intensity of combat are increased. But at its core, it's not really that different. Like, if you're actually going to do side-by-side -side comparisons of Halo Combat Evolved 
and Halo Infinite, the speed of movement that you can use with mouse and keyboard, obviously if you play Halo on a PC back in the day, and just the rate at which you can cover ground, it has been increased. It- and now this dude couldn't even be bothered to seamlessly edit between the gameplay footage to make it seamless. No, he has to literally show him unpausing the fucking video as he's recording. Really has, but... You know, the ability to do new things or different things just really isn't there. How are you going to say that there are no new abilities in Halo Infinite compared to Combat Evolved? Again, you have things like Sprint, Thrusters, you have the Threat Sensor, you got the Drop Wall, you got new grenade types, you got new weapon types, some pre-existing weapons got reworked. Now, the underlying core of the gameplay in Halo Infinite is the same as the classic Halo game, sure, but that's true for any franchise, and if a new game in a running franchise does decide to go against the core of the older games, it's usually for the worse, good example being Doom 3, which we will talk more about in a minute. Now, many are going to push back, and they're going to say, well, that's actually a good quality. That's actually something that is very good about Halo, okay? I disagree. I think Doom is a great example of... And we'll get to that in a moment. We'll get to that in a moment. I don't want to get too deep into Doom just yet. I'm going to showcase what I feel Doom successfully did that Halo has not. So, first... That's just the first point I want to make, is it's too tied to the past. Halo Infinite doesn't feel that different from the old Halo games, and I think that's really making it difficult for the game to garner any new audience members. That's a complete fucking lie, by the way. Halo Infinite's concurrent player count on Steam when it launched was 256,000 players, and again, that's just on Steam. That's not even counting the people on Xbox or using other launchers on PC. People liked Halo Infinite's gameplay precisely because it returned to the roots of the original Halo games. The reason that people didn't stick around with Halo Infinite was because the game had fuck all in terms of content when it launched. People were interested in this game precisely because of its gameplay. The reasons that Halo Infinite dropped off significantly after that have pretty much nothing to do with that. You want to know how I know this? Halo 4 and Halo 5 did exactly what you described by shifting away from the core of the classic Halo games, and guess what? People fucking hated Halo 4 and Halo 5 precisely for those reasons. Halo 4's multiplayer got rid of even starts as there was a loadout-based system similar to Call of Duty, but that ended up breaking a lot of shit because you could spawn with things like the plasma pistol and the bolt shot. Meanwhile, fixed weapon spawns from the older games were gone as they were replaced with randomized ordnance drops. Meanwhile, Halo 5 tried way too hard to lean into the movement shooter genre and just gave you so many innate abilities that you had at all times. And sure, Halo Infinite does have advanced movement options like the thruster and the grapple shot, but those are not innate abilities that you always have. You have to scavenge them off the battlefield and then they have limited uses. So with Halo Halo Infinite, 343 returned to more classic style gameplay because that's what people wanted out of a new Halo game. Secondly, I think that the evolution was too safe. It wasn't painful enough. No, if anything, the evolution of Halo was too painful. Like I described in the last segment, people hated Halo 4 and 5 because it was too different compared to the classic Halo games. And that drove away a lot of players and didn't really bring that many new ones in. Having to adjust to slightly faster player movement is like adjusting to 75 miles an hour after doing 65 miles an hour, right? It's not that different. It doesn't require a lot from you when suddenly your vehicle increases by 5 or 10 miles an hour. From a PvP perspective, I think this is actually problematic for a whole host of reasons. I mean, ground level, your veteran players are practically godlike from the very first day the game hits the market because your evolution is too safe. You've done such minor adjustments that has required such minor adaptation from your veteran players. Will some of your skill and knowledge transfer over? Sure. Like a veteran Halo player is probably going to know that plasma weapons are better against shields than bullet weapons are, which might not be immediately apparent to a newcomer. But you still have a new weapon sandbox to learn, you still have new maps to learn, you still have some new mechanics to learn, you have new physics to learn, you have new vehicles to learn. So when a new game drops, the learning curve for a new player is not that much steeper than it is for a veteran player. Hell, at a rough estimate, about half of the guns in Halo Infinite didn't exist in any of the previous Halo games. 
find a lot of the ones that have been in previous Halo games have been reworked. Like the pistol, for instance, or the shotgun, or the assault rifle, or the needler. Beyond PvP, I would say even the grappling hook is a very, very tame and minor adjustment or addition to the game. The game impact of a grappling hook is just not something that I would count as an evolutionary step for the game. Literally fucking how? A grapple hook will significantly change how you interact with the map and how you traverse it. For example, if there's a ledge high up that normally you have to take a long staircase to reach, you can instead just grapple straight up there, which if there's somebody camping that staircase, that will give you a new angle to attack them from. Or say you're in a flying vehicle like a banshee or a wasp. In previous Halo games, you almost never had to worry about being hijacked in a flying vehicle like that unless you're flying really low to the ground. Or if somebody managed manages to get a lucky shot with an overcharged plasma pistol. In Halo Infinite, though, somebody who has a grapple hook can use that to grapple onto your flying vehicle and skyjack you right out of the air. Now, you don't need to worry about everybody trying to do this to you because they can only do that if they've picked up a grapple hook off of the map and if they haven't expended all of its charges yet. But it is a very real threat that you have to keep in mind. One more thing, you can use the grapple shot to pull weapons towards you, like say there's a weapon on a rack somewhere, but it's being covered by like a sniper and you're probably going to die if you run out to grab it, but if you have the grapple shot you can just pull it towards you, and this also goes for the fusion coils which you can then chuck at enemies. Again, it balances it out with limited charges, but it does significantly change how you approach the game when you do have it. Minor changes to classic weapons or to enemies, it just all feels incredibly safe. And again, people might push back and say, well that's what makes Halo Halo, and I would argue that enough time has passed okay it's time to take a major leap forward and again i believe doom will be helpful in displaying this now the last area that i feel went wrong with halo is that they simply added they didn't really grow the game this makes the game feel somewhat static almost like halo just continues beneath the surface and you've added some trinkets and some toys along the way like an rpg that gets a few extra levels tacked on and a few new pieces of gear to try it doesn't really feel like a new game or a new era it's just more Halo. What? You mean to tell me that a new Halo game just takes what the older Halo games did and adds on top of it to create a new experience? Oh my god, it's almost like that's literally what every fucking game franchise out there does! Like, let's use Mario as an example. You know, ever since 1985, the core gameplay has always just been about running and jumping through levels. But Nintendo has just taken that concept and just added a bunch of new mechanics on top of that to change how the game feels and, you know, made new levels and new mechanics. But even as recently as its latest entry, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, the core gameplay is still the same running and jumping that it was back in 1985, because that's why people fucking like Mario. So, those are the three things I feel they kind of messed up. They stayed way too true, the evolution was way too safe, and I really feel like they did more adding to the game as opposed to growing the game. So, let's talk about Doom, okay? What did Doom do right? What did they get right that we could learn from and apply to Halo. Now again, in a similar way, I don't want to get deep into the specifics. I want to talk about three ways that Doom got the evolution of the franchise right, okay? First, it was tethered and not tied to the past games. What's the difference? <laughs> This distinction will be huge in contrasting how Doom and Halo have stepped into modern gaming. The modern gaming landscape has been stepped into quite differently by these titles, and I believe that Doom is tethered to the past and not tied to it. I'll explain why I'm saying that in a moment. My guy, tie and tether are synonyms. They literally mean the same fucking thing. If I am tethered to something, then I am tied to it. Second, it retains retained its identity. So it's a good thing when Doom retains its identity, but when Halo retains its identity, it's a bad thing? Like, what the fuck? Dude, you gotta learn how to keep that same energy. Okay, this is actually huge. This is often something that something people worry about, or they'll criticize a game. They'll say, it's just not such and such game anymore, right? It just isn't the same, or this isn't my Final Fantasy, right? 
Now, third, the third thing they did is they evolved what mattered. There are certain facets of gameplay that simply must evolve with time. If not, they will automatically feel dated, and I don't think Halo did any of these things. Okay, so first, what do I mean by it's tethered and not tied to the past. Well, I want you to picture the difference between when you do a three-legged race with someone and your ankles are tied together, tied together, and when a dog is on a leash in your yard, it sort of tethers him to an area, but he still has a lot of freedom to move around. When you're tied to somebody, you can't really move very far or do much different than the person that you're tied to. And that's what Halo Infinite is. No, if you are tied to somebody in a three-legged race, you can still go wherever you want. You just gotta make sure that the other person's on the same page as you as to where you wanna go. If you're a dog tethered to a pole in the yard, you can only go as far as the leash will reach. Like, I don't know what's worse, this analogy or the fact that he got it completely backwards from the point he was trying to fucking make. It's a hamstrung game. It largely mimics too much of the old games, and it can't really stand on its own. What distinctive things can you say about Halo Infinite that aren't really going to see it tied significantly to the past? The grapple shot, the threat sensor, the cinder shot, the heat wave, the pulse carbine, all of the shock weapons, the dynamo grenades, the new maps, sliding, and hell, all the examples I listed in all the previous segments, but I don't really feel like repeating myself like a broken record. I think y'all get the point. Doom is clearly tethered to the old games. Like, that's undeniable. You can sense it in the movement, the enemies, even the visceral nature of the game. There's clearly something that has it tethered but it's not tied to the old games. It's not tied to the past. It leapt forward. It was allowed to reinterpret. It was allowed to keep those things in place without completely abandoning them, right? Not being tied to the old games really granted it the room it needed to roam around and to try new things. And Halo feels constrained by the past. It doesn't feel like it's honoring it. It feels like it's sort of stuck. You say that, and yet you provide no examples of this. Like, if you compare Halo Infinite to Halo CE, you'll find, like, a bunch of stuff that they've added on top of it while still remaining true to its core. Same thing if you compare something like Doom 2016 versus Classic Doom from 1993. They both have the same core as their progenitors while also adding new gameplay mechanics on top of that. The only difference is you're framing it like a bad thing for Halo versus a good thing for Doom, and you never really explain how Doom does it differently compared to Halo. Well, that or you're just acting like Blindbeard the Pirate when it comes to all the innovations Halo has made over the years. Second, Doom retained its identity. Now, this is obviously extremely extremely hard given how much the game has changed to do. Retaining identity is more than just making a game look the same. It has to still feel the same. It should feel the way that Doom should feel. But the clearly thing I think they did is they almost remastered what Doom 1 or Doom 2 would feel like and they elevated it everything you could do. They elevated all of the things at your disposal. This is where I believe Halo has just too much baggage. If you go back to Halo 1 and you go back to Halo 2, imagine what a remastered, crazy, next-gen version of those games would be like. Well, luckily, I don't have to imagine what those games would look like if they got remastered, because they already did get remastered. Halo CE and Halo 2 both got remastered in the Master Chief Collection. Well, technically, CE got remastered three years before that on the Xbox 360, and it was included with the Master Chief Collection, but still. Also, Doom 2016 is not a remaster of the classic Doom games from the 90s. In fact, it's actually a direct sequel to them. Right? What should Master Chief be able to do now? Remember, you gotta keep him tethered, but not tied. And the trick here is, I feel like with Doom, they primarily went back to the first two games, seemingly ignoring a lot of what happened in between. Doom 64, Doom 3... There's clearly some carryover with some of the models and the enemy design, but those feel largely ignored. It feels very much tethered to Doom 1 and 2. Like, hey, what would those games look like today with all that we can do? You know, it's funny you say that when literally 343 is on record stating that their inspiration for making Halo Infinite's campaign was taking the second mission in Halo Combat Evolved and expanding that into a full game. Not to mention, Halo Infinite's campaign is a fucking open world. 
world. Literally no other Halo game has had that before, unless you count ODST. And even then, ODST's open world is more like a mission select. Again, you're, you're not tethered. I'm sorry, you're not tied, you're tethered, and you have to retain that identity. And that has a relationship to the third thing that I want to say. They evolved what mattered, okay? And this relates to evolution needing to be painful. You have to be willing to just get rid of things, okay? Slow movements, familiar weapons, clunky weapons, weapons that don't feel all that strong. You gotta toss them or change them. My guy, if this is the argument you're trying to run with, then if anything, you should be praising Halo and trashing modern Doom. For example, Doom 2016 has literally every gun that was in Doom 2, and their general use case is largely the same as it was in Doom 2, besides maybe the plasma rifle, which is no longer a powerhouse. That, and I guess the BFG functions more like it did in Quake 2, as opposed to Doom 2, with the technical side of things. But other than that, these weapons, in terms of use cases, are pretty much the same as they were in Doom 2. And then, Doom Eternal also brought back the Unmaker, which previously debuted in Doom 64 back in 1997. But Halo Infinite did what you described. The plasma rifle is gone, the Covenant Carbine is gone, the beam rifle is gone, the brute shot is gone. Several weapons got reworked, such as the shotgun having reduced damage, but having an increase in fire rate, ammo capacity, and range. The plasma pistol takes longer to charge, and it no longer has the ability to stall vehicles like it did from Halo 3 onwards. Instead, that ability has been given to the shock weapons, which did not exist in any game prior to Halo Infinite. There's also things like the Heat Wave, which is a sort of shotgun rifle hybrid where you can change the spread pattern. There's the Cinder Shot, where you can guide the projectile by precision aiming. There's the Skewer, where you gotta reload after every shot, and you have to take into account the projectile speed and projectile drop, but it'll one shot any infantry as well as some vehicles and deal significant damage to heavier vehicles. So by your own fucking logic, you should be praising Halo Infinite and attacking games like Doom 2016 and Eternal. Imagine Doom 2016 or or Doom Eternal with marginally different weapons than Doom 2. Well, lucky for us, we don't have to imagine because that's literally what the weapons in Doom 2016 and Eternal are like. Again, some specific details on how the weapons function might be different and the of course, there's also the alternate weapon fires on each of the guns. But besides that, they pretty much all fulfill the same role as they do in Doom 2, again, except for the plasma rifle. That's what a lot of the weapons in Doom 3 felt like, if I'm honest. Yeah, and Doom 3 fucking sucked. What's your point? But Doom 2016 took each weapon and stretched it beyond its former self. There's a clear inspiration, but not total separation. Halo weapons don't feel inspired by the past. They feel like they are from the past. And that's what I want to talk about next. What could Halo do? And in light of what Doom has done, what could Halo do? Because basically, I think there are four major areas that could be evolved in Halo. Okay? Ironically enough... The first Halo was Halo Combat Evolved, and that's exactly what needs to happen. The combat needs to evolve. I want to talk about four areas specifically. The weapons, the movement, the enemies, and yes, Master Chief. So first, the weapons. This is an area where Halo actually has a lot in its corner, okay? If anything, I think the Mangler in Halo Infinite proves that as soon as they make something new and better, it becomes the best and the most preferred. And that's a problem when the weapon pool is so easily lopsided. Huh? So you literally give an example of a new weapon that Halo Infinite added and the fact that people like to use said weapon, yet you're gonna say that the weapon sandbox is too firmly rooted in the past? Somebody, please explain to me how the fuck that works. Also, contrary to what the pro players will tell you, no, the Mangler is not overpowered. It's only really particularly great at close range, but at mid-range or longer range, it's going to get decimated by weapons like the Assault Rifle, the Commando, the Battle Rifle, or otherwise. But what is in Halo's corner is how iconic and faithful the weapons have been. That gives you a great canvas to work with. And that's the picture I want to use. Each weapon, as it exists, should just merely be a canvas, a starting point. Just how crazy can you make the AR? That classic AR with the blue ammo readout and its angular, sort of triangle-like shape. Again, look at what Doom did. It honored the past, but it gave us something new, powerful, and fun. Like, 
even some of the more bombastic weapons like the Ravager or the Cinder Shot or the Skewer, they all just feel too safe. Literally fucking how? I mean, you could say that the Ravager's primary fire is like a burst version of the concussion rifle, but guess what? Its overcharged shot ignites the floor where the shot lands, which serves as an area denial weapon, something that no previous Halo game really had. The Cinder Shot, again, you can guide the shots to exactly where you want them to go after you fired it by precision aiming. And the Skewer is like a more evolved concept of the Spartan Laser, one that works with the somewhat faster pace of Halo Infinite. And this is where the next big step in evolution is needed. Because if you're going to change the weapons, if you're going to make the weapons kind of crazy, you're going to have to adjust movement. Doom gave us, I think, in 2016 and in Doom Eternal, they gave us just enough speed, agility, and movement volition that the entire landscape of combat opened up. It allowed you to get really creative with how you navigated the spaces that they created. My guy, the classic Doom games from the 90s were always really fucking fast. And while you could say that Doom 2016 has things like double jumps and mantling, that's largely enabled because of the many improvements that have been made since 19- 1993 in terms of technology. The only one that wouldn't have been really limited by technology would be Doom 3, but it was a lot slower because it was too busy trying to rip off System Shock. This is where I have to restate that evolution is painful. Yes, you would potentially lose core audience members if suddenly movement and the weapons were dramatically evolved and and ratcheted up. Which is precisely why changing the core of Halo is a bad fucking idea. This is why they need to stick to Halo's core and not deviate from it too much. Because if you do, you push away the actual fans of this game. I'm not saying you have to make Halo into Doom do what Doom did. I'm not saying you have to make Halo into Doom. Do what Doom did. How are you going to say that Halo doesn't need to be made into Doom, but then in the very next sentence you're going to say that Halo needs to do what Doom did? Hell, I'm pretty sure the last person that contradicted himself this fucking quickly was Jim Sterling. Take all those great weapons that you have and bring them forward. Okay. Well, let's see. The assault rifles in Halo Infinite, the pistols in Halo Infinite, the battle rifles in Halo Infinite, the needlers in Halo Infinite, the plasma pistols in Halo Infinite, the shotgun is in Halo Infinite, the energy sword is in Halo Infinite, the sentinel beam is in Halo Infinite, the gravity hammers in Halo Infinite, the sniper rifles in Halo Infinite, the rocket launchers in Halo Infinite. Yeah, it sounds to me like they brought plenty of older weapons forward into Halo Infinite, but seriously, at this point you're just backtracking because earlier you said they needed to gut weapons from Halo Infinite, but now you're saying they to bring them forward okay it's uh, yes you're gonna lose core audience members but are those people keeping your dated halo alive yes they are why do you think that halo the master chief collection had a higher player count than halo infinite for the longest time and hell that's why halo infinite despite the content droughts had a small dedicated player base playing all throughout that usually you get between five and six thousand players as the 24 hour peak on average which granted is below what a big profile game like halo infinite it should be, but that is not dead by any metric. And it wasn't until recently with the Season 5 update where they brought back those casual players because it actually had content worth a damn. Like, a truly new and transformative Halo would usher in a new era, uh, and it would also usher in new players. The mere existence of Halo 4 and Halo 5 proved the exact fucking opposite of that. Those games transformed what Halo was in many ways, the core audience for Halo didn't like it, and while it might have drawn in some new players, those new players did not stick around. For example, Halo 4 was trying to copy a lot of shit from Call of Duty, but the audience that came to that game because of that quickly left to go back and just play Call of Duty. A similar thing happened with Halo 5 and movement shooters. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that they shouldn't innovate with new Halo games at all, but those new innovations shouldn't completely change what Halo is all about. That's why people liked Halo Infinite's gameplay and not so much with Halo 4 and 5. So, movement would have to evolve right along with the weapons. I need to be able to dodge or dash or make agile decisions if the weapons are crazier and if the weapons are stronger. So you mean Halo 5, which many consider to be the worst Halo game out there? Yeah, this shit just writes itself at this point. The two would have to go hand in hand with their changes, which would ultimately be related to the third thing. And I know this might not be important to the PvP guys, but the enemies would have to evolve in Halo as well. 
Doom clearly loved bringing forward classic enemies. The Caco Demon, the the sort of floating spiky one-eyed mouth. I don't I don't know if I'm saying that right. The Caco Demon. It, it's just that spiky floating red mouth guy with one eye. I think that's a perfect example, right? Bringing forward an enemy from the past, but really making him look nuts, okay? Alright, at this point, I'm convinced that this motherfucker has never played Halo Infinite for himself, because if he did, he would know that Halo Infinite actually does do this. You know, the grunts which have been in every game since Halo CE? Well, they've been brought back, along with a certain high-ranking variant that has a very weak shield. Jackal skirmishers have returned from Halo Reach. You have the skimmers, which are basically an evolved concept of the drones from Halo 2, 3, and Reach. There's now multiple types of Hunters, which to my knowledge, this is the first Halo game to do so. There's the Brute Berserkers, which are unarmed, but will just charge at you and melee you to death, which was a state that Brutes could enter in Halo 2, 3, and Reach, but these are dedicated guys with full-on armor. Oh, and Sentinels return for the first time since Halo 3, and this time they can carry more weapons than just the standard Sentinel beam. I think that may be one of the latent problems with Halo, okay? There was eight years between Halo 5 and Halo Infinite. Check your math there. There was 22 years between Doom 2 and Doom 2016. My guy, are you just completely ignoring the fact that Final Doom, Doom 64, and Doom 3 exist? Because that's a big fucking yikes if that's the case. This makes some of the shedding process a bit easier, okay? It's less noticeable because there was a huge jump in technology, there's a huge jump in graphics, and again, if we ignore Doom 3, then there's this massive leap in what the game looks and feels like. You know, there's a very interesting reason that Reforge here is asking everybody to ignore Doom 3, because if you didn't ignore Doom 3, it would completely dismantle his point. Because there was a big leap in technology between Doom 3 and the previous Doom game, that being Doom 64. And guess what? People still hated Doom 3 because it didn't play like the older Doom games. That's why people fucking hated Doom 3, and why they liked Doom 2016, because unlike Doom 3, Doom 2016 actually played like the classic Doom games. I still believe Halo could make this jump, right? How? As I said, go back to the first two games. Halo 2 released in 2004. Spend the next five years making a killer Halo. Evolve it the way that Doom evolved itself. That would make you drop a Halo in 2028. 2028, all the way back to 2004 when Halo 2 first came out, That's a 24 year span. Act like the middle games didn't even happen. They don't even exist. Like in the same way that Doom largely ignored a lot of those middle things that took place. It's more linked to Doom 1 and Doom 2. Now this dude is acting like we should completely ignore everything from Halo 3 to Halo Infinite. Well, I think a lot of Halo fans would be fine with ignoring what happened in Halo 4 and 5. Rebooting the Halo franchise as a whole is just a terrible fucking idea. And again, Reforge is acting like Final Doom and Doom 64 don't exist, even though they also played very much the same as Doom 1 and 2. Hell, do you want to know why at the beginning of Doom 2016 you emerged from a coffin that was extracted from hell? It's because at the end of Doom 16, 64, you were stuck in hell after defeating the mother of all demons. That I think would help you bring the game forward, essentially. Lastly, Master Chief. Master Chief has to change, guys. He does. Like, Doom Guy and Master Chief certainly have some things in common. They are grunts in green, and they get the job done. But Master Chief needs to leave behind the broody man of few words in the armor. Make him a cyborg, make him a mech, or, I don't know, honor Master Chief and make him a hybrid half-person, half-cyborg, like, a hundred years in the future. I don't know. Do something, okay? 
I don't know how well versed you are in your Halo lore, but evidently it's not very much because if you were, you would know that the Master Chief actually is a cyborg. Part of the Spartan program is not only genetic improvements, but cybernetic improvements as well. What do you think the Mjolnir armor is? Hell, they have to link directly to the suit using a neural implant. That way they can control the suit's movements with their mind because without it, they would literally be crushed under the weight of their own armor. Doom guy has an advantage as the cliche silent killing machine, right? They didn't have to do much with him. They just had to make his armor look cooler, okay? No matter how you shake it, Halo in its current state is just not appealing to new players. And it's barely appealing to long-standing players. No, Halo Infinite appealed to many new players when it launched. They just didn't stick around because of the lack of content. That just means that 343 needed to get their shit together and release more content. Not that they needed to change up the identity of Halo, because changing the identity of Halo is what pushed away a lot of people in the first place. Also, many long-standing Halo fans like Halo Infinite because it is generally a return to form. Now, sure, you do have a couple of bungee tards like Bavin or Evolved 117 that will tell you that the game sucks because it's not exactly like Halo 3, but there's a reason almost nobody takes them seriously. It's time to let Doom save Halo, and maybe even let id Software be the team to do it, or at least help out, help make it happen. The alternative, in my estimation, would be just another Halo. And just like that, the video is over, so I guess the moral of the story here is that Halo needs to change its core identity to appeal to a new group of people because they totally didn't try that with Halo 4 and 5, and it totally didn't blow up in their face because of it. Oh, and uh, Halo Infinite is literally just Halo Combat Evolved with fuck all in terms of changes since then. And today is also opposite day. But in all seriousness, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more, and tell me what you think about Reforge Gaming completely misunderstanding Halo and its issues. Anyways, that's it. Peace! <laughs>